It's time for FOMO. So today we are looking at Apple, which is making almost a 2% move to the upside here, leading a lot of the big tech names. Actually, I was just seeing Tesla is actually leading the MAG7 trade currently. But Apple, with some news today, positive developments out of India, as well as Loop Capital giving shares a new street high price target. I believe this at $300 a share is optimistic, obviously. But here to discuss more on those various headlines, I'd like to welcome in Caroline Wood, Senior Markets Correspondent for the network. So Caroline, Walk us through everything. I mean, I, we can start. I mean, there's so many things to talk about when it comes to Apple. We'll start wherever here, but obviously making a nice move to the upside today. Hey there, Jenny. Yes, as you said, Apple share is up about 2% on the heels of this bullish analyst activity. Got an upgrade to buy from hold at Loop Capital with a price target of $300. That's up from $170. So huge price target bump, but likely because also uh, the Apple's trading well above that old price target at this point. Uh, that implies almost 30% upside, though, from current levels. Loop Capital's bullishness stems from what else? AI, of course. Loop says it has an opportunity the next few years to solidify itself as consumer uh, Gen AI base camp of choice, just as it did for social media 15 years ago with the iPhone and digital content consumption 20 years ago with the iPod. That said, while they see Gen AI as the key driver, they say there's some other contributing dynamics, which include potential for an accentuated refresh cycle from amplified COVID demand and a new iPhone platform in 2025 with the iPhone 17. So, uh, you know, AI is the key driver, but sees uh, potential other catalysts as well. Also should note Morgan Stanley upped its price target as well. Now at 273, it was previously at 216. Morgan Stanley maintained an overweight overweight rating. The analysts also replaced Dell Technologies with Apple as the firm's top pick in enterprise hardware. Morgan Stanley says Apple intelligence is a clear catalyst for a multi-year product upgrade cycle. Uh, its analysis now points to a record cycle ahead. So they say it will drive its fiscal 2026 earnings per share estimate to um, $8.70, which is essentially 7% above Wall Street's consensus right now. So that's for fiscal 2026. So Apple share is up about 2% right now, up about, uh, call it, mm, almost 11.5% just in July alone, up 22% year to date. But the real impressive move is the move that we've really seen since exactly three months ago. I was taking a look on April 15th. Uh, it was trading uh, about $62.50 lower than where it is right now. So 36% upside just in three months. Yeah, real, really incredible. And that's why it finds itself on this segment. Although, it's called FOMO, right? We're missing out on something. We want to jump in for the excitement. Look, I've been uh, you know, analyzing uh, you know, retail uh, positioning and trading activity for years. The retail investors in Apple, they have been. It's been one of the widely, uh, most widely held positions uh, for investors for years, consistently one of the most actively traded positions. I think the FOMO is on the analyst side. I think some of these analysts got caught yeah. off sides, and they're playing a little bit of FOMO catch-up here, Caroline. What do you make of that theory? Well, I mean, Loop Capital had a $170 price target. So the fact that they upgraded and now have a $300 price target shows that they're a little late to the game if they're just saying to buy it now. I was taking a look in terms of Jenny had mentioned that's a street high. I see that as the street high as well, according to Refinitiv. But if you take a look, the price target for Apple has increased uh, quite a bit since uh, April, but it's only $217 right now, uh, despite the fact that 75% of analysts have a buy rating on shares. Apple's currently trading just below 235. So I think that that proves your theory correct, Alex. Yeah, and I think that also with hairs not, shares now touching a new all-time high today, I mean, it, it's only, it's amazing because nothing really fundamentally has changed. You know, we got this update out of India, but we've been saying it's like the, the very interesting narrative that's become the expectations versus the reality of Apple. Because I feel like the expectations is we can see this massive iPhone 16 upgrade cycle and that right now will continue to grow in India. But I guess what is like the skepticism? Like as far as the analysts are concerned, I have to imagine there's still those that are in a more neutral stance because it feels like that camp has been what's controlled the narrative all year long. Well, I think the skepticism comes from, or I, I think analysts are just more positive now in hopes that AI, Apple intelligence, will actually boost iPhone sales because, you know, there was a lot of pessimism 
in terms of Apple earlier this year because of sluggish iPhone sales. And that actually is still the case. Actually, there's preliminary data from IDC that just came out, and it showed that shipments of Apple's iPhones rose 1.5%. Uh, globally from a year earlier to 45.2 million units in the June quarter. Global smartphone shipments increased 6.5% year over year. So people are buying smartphones. We're seeing a rebound with a 6.5% uptick, but they're just not necessarily iPhones. And M Apple actually lost market share overall, dropping to 15.8% from 16.6%. So analysts are optimistic that Apple intelligence will reignite iPhone sales. So that's the expectation that they will. They haven't, it hasn't actually happened yet, obviously, because September will be the key, you know, moment when they actually unveil the new iPhone. So, you know, obviously we'll hear from Apple in terms of earnings uh, on August 1st. So we'll get a little bit more, you know, clarity, but that preliminary data doesn't necessarily show this huge rebound, you know, in, in Apple. And we know that, you know, they've been struggling on that front. It's just that AI now, Apple intelligence, uh, their version of artificial intelligence if you will, is what's giving shares a boost. I will say I was reading a note from Dan Ives last night. He, of course, is v very bullish on Apple, uh, has maintained that bullishness, but he says that Apple's June quarter is the opening act for the main event in September, He's saying we now believe initial iPhone 16 shipments will be closer to 90 million uh, as opposed to the street expectation of 80 to 84 million, so thinks that that will actually have a surprise to the upside. And he says we strongly believe the upcoming June quarter will be the last negative Negative growth quarter for China with a growth turnaround beginning in the September quarter as well. So we know that's been a, a weak point for Apple as well. So obviously that's where his bullishness stems. But uh, Apple has a lot to prove because this has been a share price that has, you know, run higher on hopes that AI is going to drive iPhone sales and we have to see if it will. Yeah, Caroline, I think what Jenny and you are laying out is exactly the kind of scenario that sets up for disappointment, right? The stock price reflects good news. And there's really nothing to actually tangibly say the good news is going to happen. The information we have is people aren't buying Nikes. They're not buying Lululemons. They're not going to Target anymore. They have to go to Walmart. They're not even going to McDonald's anymore because it's too expensive. Yet they're going to go buy this four-digit uh, costing item that they already have just because it can do something without you having a, to download an app that you could just download right now. So. Look, I don't know. I mean, the, the China story is real if that were to happen. The India story, there's real growth there. But the problem with the, with the China calls, they've been saying this for three years and it hasn't happened yet, Caroline, at some point. I just don't have confidence in these analysts to assess uh, macroeconomic uh, forces in China. Well, and I think also to put it into perspective, I'm not trying to come across as an Apple bear by any means, but I think perspective is key. You know, we've been talking about the, the positive India data. I didn't actually even get into that. Annual sales in India hit a record of almost $8 billion in the year through March. That's a 33 percent year-over-year jump. We know India is one of uh, Apple's fastest-growing markets, but it only accounts for 2 percent of its uh, fiscal year sales of, uh, you know, upwards of $400 billion. And iPhones make up just three and a half percent of the country's almost 700 million dollar or 700 million smartphones in use. That's a stat according to CounterPoint research. So it's a, a growth opportunity there, and they are certainly seeing growth. But I think the perspective is it's still just a small kind of data point. But yes, if Dan Ives is right about the China story, that could certainly, uh, you know, be a positive for Apple, how much is priced in at these levels, you know, kind of TBD. But I guess that's what analysts have to do, right? They have to speculate and hope that they're right and uh, hope that those price targets are right. Otherwise, they have to adjust a $170 price target to 300 and a hold rating to buy. And, okay, Carolyn, I, I totally agree with you. And I think there's a healthy degree of skepticism that is surrounding any time. First of all, you have this substantial of a price target raise. At least I'm always like, like, did you not pay attention? Or when you see a stock that's run, run up 43% from 52-week lows. I mean, we were at $164 a share roughly just, I mean, at the end of, like, April pretty much. And now we've risen to over 237 a share earlier today, obviously, before pulling back. So I think a healthy degree of skepticism is, is perhaps right when things have, have turned over in as substantially as they have in Apple shares. But we'll leave it there. Great insight as always, Caroline Wood, Senior Markets Correspondent for the Networks.